little quick project to share with you. And I've just been playing around, which is why my hands are filthy, but I just thought, you know what? I love how these came out, so I was just going to go ahead and jump on here today and share with you how to make these just little um, tuck spots for your journal. And just to show you, I love the colors. They're very much, um, I think, in keeping with autumn, but they would work for anything. But look at how beautiful that would be and you could just have a little tuck there or you could put it down here a tuck here or just purely as a um, oops, sorry as a page adornment I love uh, anything that uses up scrap and that's how I came up with this idea so let me just share with you some supplies you're going to need I used a fairly heavyweight craft cardstock. You could use white, but for this project, I, because I wanted it to be really uh, subtle, you know I love my purples and greens. I just love how these came out. Anyways, that's um, so that's why I opted for the, the craft. And I've got quite a lot of this. Um, but the other thing is this packing paper that you get. Um, <laughs> when we cleared out my mother-in-law and father-in-law's house, she's like super OCD, and she had stacks of this that she had flattened out. And I was like, yes, <laughs> we did actually have something in common. Uh, so I was delighted. Paul was about to put it in the, the, um, the dumpster, or, or rubbish bin, as they say, and I was like, no, give me that. So I've got a lot of this, and that's how I made the flowers and the little leaves. Now, I will tell you, you're going to get mucky in this um, project, but it's worth it for the way they come out. You'll need a heat gun, and then you're going to need some um, inks. I'm, I'm using the oxides. I do not know if just distress inks but I can't see why it wouldn't work, but I'm just sharing with you what I've uh, used. Heat gun, but we'll just jump in and get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is, let me find, oh boy, I've buried it. <laughs> Cut yourself out a couple of little labels or just something that has a nice shape to it. I chose these. Um, because they were what I had in my stash. Now, if you wanted to go larger, um, do do do. Again, these are all part of a Stampin' Up um, that I've had for years, and they are retired. But you could take this as your base and just build on it and for example that could even become a pocket if you use something that big so you know just take this and just let your imagination go wild because oh my gosh so much could be done with this I think um, so just bearing that in mind um, okay let's get started uh, let's see here we need to cut out the shape which is what I've done here with your craft cardstock so you've got and then you're going to want to choose um, an embossing folder I, this is my go-to this is um, I've had this years ago I bought this from HSN I don't know if you can still buy it it's the Anna Griffin it came with four I believe um, in this set but just something that you've got some texture I mean to be honest <clears throat> I've got this, for example, is a Stampin' Up, again, retired, but anything that's going to give you something that this um, inks are going to grip to, because you're just going to build on that um, with your colors. So, now, 
uh, let's see, so we've got those. I'm going to sit those to the side because I want to get everything cut first and then we'll come back. So the next thing, let me knock this up a bit, guys, is <clears throat> take this shipping paper. I'll make sure that's got a tear on it, but I want to make sure that I've got enough of this that... And I just fold it until I got four layers. Um, you may not need that many, depending on how many of these you're going to do. But I try to do, I mean, in particular, a project like this, when I've got, I'm going to have such a mass, I would go ahead and make a batch of these. I don't generally do mass um production of embellishments, but in the case of this, I, I definitely would, because it's going to make a mess. Okay, let me get going here. Shut up, Gina. <laughs> I must be in chatty mode today. So, just going to run that now. It's quite a fiddly thing when you're working with this, because it's really thin paper, but don't worry, it, it, it all comes good. So you see, that's four layers. I'll pull those apart in a minute. In fact, I'll just go ahead and to do two uh, batches. I don't think I'm going to need that many, but the more that you add to it, oh my gosh, it's just such a pretty, pretty pro project. I, I'm really, I'm going to play around with this even more and try to create some pockets with this. All right, so I've got that done. Now the other thing, for the flowers, you're going to have to either have a flower punch or some flower dies. Um, I've just recently de-stashed my punches um, because I the weight of carrying those around and I just thought I'm, I'm not getting enough use of it to justify hanging on to them. So these have worked beautifully. These were a spellbinders die, but you know, you can find this sort of thing um, all over if you don't already have it. Um, most of us who have been crafting for years, you've got this stuff in your stash. So that's all I'm going to do with the flowers because that ended up being enough layers uh, for that. So let me get this set to the side. And put my things away or I will lose them. My space is so small, guys, I, I have to try to clean as I go. Um, otherwise, you know, these little bits that you've got, particularly my small um, rubber stamps, if I don't put them away right then, oh boy, they can end up in the trash that gets scooped up and uh, I can't risk that. Okay, so... If you've got a glass mat, or I'm going to use this heat um, pad here that I've had, let's, uh, you're going to need something. It just works easier. I tried to do it direct on the paper with these um, inks, and it just really didn't work, so it's better. But we're going to, first thing I want to do... Sorry, I've got the wrong color for that. Is I want to take, this is the old paper, and then I've also got the crushed olive. But for the background, I just took the um, old paper and just started rubbing that in there. Now this, you can just go directly onto the cardstock, and that works really well. You've probably seen me do this before on some of the journal cards, and it is just beautiful. So what I did was I got a green, um, I put green on the base, and then I came back with some of this uh, metallic Luster. This is why your hands are going to just be 
um, really a mess when this is over. But because I just wanted a little bit of that uh, sheen, and I just played around with it on how much I wanted of this, and then I came back then with some ink as well to really pull out the um, the emboss a bit more. Now, I would advise on this, you know your, whatever your uh, tool is that you use for your distress, do not use it on this because that dioxide is still kind of wet. I don't know, it's just a, it's different to other inks and it's kind of still on there and you do not want to get that mixed into your brush. So I would use a completely different sponge to then um, get some of your ink. And it's just, like I said, just to pull out the um, embossed image a little bit more. And you can play around with this um, to get the right color because that's just the background, but like you can see here, it's just still got a little bit of sheen. I don't know if that's showing up on the camera or not, but I just like it. I, you know, but play around with it. You might, you might want to just omit that step and just purely stick with inks. But it's nice. I just think it's nice to have a little bit of the metallic, especially since everything else is very flat. All right, so I'm going to sit those to the side. At this point, um, if you're working with the dioxide, you'll you'll know um, that you can just take it directly to. Well, let me just go ahead with the green first because I've still got some down here. This is to do the leaves, so just take a little bit of that and put it on, and then add your water, and then now you can just take these and get them apart and just press them into that and sit them to the side because this is when we're going to start um, drying those and they'll really come to life then. Because this is such a thin paper, I'm opting to do it this way rather than if it was a heavier uh, cardstock I would crumble them up to get the flowers to look more lifelike, but these are so thin you would just end up with just um, probably tearing it or we'll get a little bit more of that. See how thin that is, and don't worry if they all bunch up because it's going to do that when you hit the, hit it with the heat anyway. So don't be worried about that because I was when I first did this, and I was like, oh no, how am I going to get those apart? But it will come together. Um, so before I start working with the the purple, I'm just going to go ahead and dry these. Uh, and you're going to see, you're going to lose a little bit of light. Oh, I can't help it. I've got to have that. Sorry for the the um, heat, guys. Let me just... In fact, I tell you what, I'll, I'll just pause it. All I'm going to do is hit these with some heat, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I am done heating those and I just want you to see on some white paper how that changes the color of that. Let me just knock that down a bit so you can really see. Isn't it beautiful? It makes them look so real. 
Um, so that's why I said you can see they're still crumpled up, but that's not a problem. We'll get to that in just a bit. But aren't they beautiful? Oh, I love that color. Okay, so let's get on and do these flowers. I'm going to sit these over here to the side. Same thing with this. Um, just clean this a bit so I don't get any of that green on the purple. I think those are probably my favorite colors of the... Um, the dioxides are these old paper, crushed olive, and rusty concord. They are just beautiful. Alright, so let's get that. Get another bit of that. Beautiful, beautiful colors. Okay, try to clean that up a bit. And now I'm just going to hit that with the heat. The difference being, I'm going to let you see this because I will crumple these slightly. Just kind of Crumple them up, being very careful because it's very thin paper you're working with now. And you can just keep absorbing all that ink off of the, the mat. Just get it all into that paper and it will make some beautiful uh, flowers. Again, just keep scrunching those together because it the more you do that the more realistic these look. I probably wouldn't advise doing that with your hands. It's just that I'm so used to it from uh, all of the years of baking and crafting. It, uh, I think I've got uh, some pretty tough hands. Okay, I'm very happy with that. Those have come out, I think, probably even better than the first batch, so that's awesome. All right, so let's see here. What have I got here? Let me get rid of that now. Okay, these were a couple of those mulberry uh, flowers I picked up off of eBay. And I'm just going to tone those down a bit. The, the reason I'm using these is because that is the smallest die I've got for a flower at the moment. So I felt as though it needed a little bit more in the center and it's kind of nice to combine different um, materials as well.
these kind of remind me of a hydrangea because you know how the hydrangea when it's uh, dying the color becomes like that and also the leaves really crumble together and I just I love it yeah these have come out even more crumpled than the first ones you can see but I love that actually If you don't want it to be this much, just don't worry about crump, um, crimping them up, you know, before while they're wet. Just let it dry because the heat gun itself will pull them together. So I've got four of those, that in the center, and now my little bread. And so now I just want to poke a hole through the center there to get that brown through. So you can see, very, very realistic. Okay, so let's just take this one, um, and I like that rose, so I'm going to leave that over to the side to kind of show. This time, I'm going to actually put another brad in it, just for that, I think with the metal, it, I think that's going to look really nice just to have an extra little bit of metal there. And now get your little glue and just start to lay these. You don't need a lot of glue, just, just enough because this flower is going to come over most of it because it's going to be positioned right around there. But you want to have a bit of those. Oh, I do love the color that these have come out. I don't know, they just, um, beautiful. And I'm not going to worry about, um, actually even straightening that out, because in nature, you know, that's just the way things are. I think that looks more real like that, personally. And it gives it a lot more dimension, too. And then now I'm just going to get some glue. Oh boy, it must have got plugged up again. put a, a pretty good little dollop there. Okay. <laughs> so now you can see how that's looking and I just took I was gifted these words, so I'm going to try to find something on here. Light the way I like that. I really am, um, mo you know, inspirational, motivational quotes at the moment. That's my thing. Um, so that is just perfect for uh, how I'm feeling at the moment. And I like that. I'm actually going to lay that one on top of the little leaf there. 
Okay, let me see if I want to put, I'm going to try to put just a little bit more. So there it is. I love that. I love how that's come out. So I'll sit that over and let's just go ahead and finish up this last one. You know what? I'm going to try something. Oh, that's better. Okay. That's bugging me because it's a bit too pink. I want that to be a little bit more of the purple. So I'm just going to come back over that. Yeah, I like that. Okay. All right. And same thing here. Let's get our little flower made. Okay, and that is done. So we'll just get a few leaves. Now this one, just get a little bit of glue, a little bit of glue there. And then a few more. Just stack them up as many as, as you want. Because I think it, the more you've got, the prettier it is, really. Oh gosh, the color on those. Look at that. Look at the colors on that. It's so pretty. Oh, I love this. love this project. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to have to try to make... A couple of uh, larger ones as um, pockets. Okay, you know what? Let me just cut one out. We're just going to try it really quick. I'll be right. Okay, guys, what I did was I went over and my shipping paper, I did uh, three layers of it. And this is a, sorry, let me get my about four and a half by three and three quarter pocket and now I'm just thinking that in the center of that and I'm just going to go ahead and do that right now so there you go there's another way oh goodness let me get some different glue I'm going to have to work on that today boy do you feel like most of the time you spend prepping for the project Rather than actually doing the project, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, cleaning and 
<laughs> getting your glue sorted. And I finally dealt with this glue the other day because I've kept having to really, really squeeze and then I realized um, it had gotten all gooped up. So once I did that, that was a big old improvement. Ugh. The life of a crafter. But we wouldn't have it any other way, would we? So yeah, I'm loving that as a um, pocket in a journal. Oh my gosh, I love that. Okay. Get this turned over so you can see how those have come out. I'm really, really happy with that. I hope you've enjoyed that, guys. Um, if you got any questions, obviously leave them. In the box below and I will uh, address those as soon as possible. It's a little close up so you can see. <coughs> so I hope that's inspired you to get get some of your inks out and play around with it today and I'll be back very soon with another project. You guys stay safe, stay uh, happy and looking forward and I'll be back soon. <laughs>